Hi everyone, it's Dr. Jones again. And today we're gonna talk about how you can use graphs to show proportional relationships. Now, I've been doing a lot of talk lately about ratios and rates and proportions are just equivalent ratios. They're just showing how two ratios can equal each other. And we can show that so very well using graphs. Now, to explain how you can do this, I'm going to bring up something that I talked about in a previous video. I'm going to bring up brownies because I love them. <laughs> so in a previous video, we talked about the ratio of 20 brownies costing 50 cents each. Okay, so this is a rate because we have 20 brownies and 50 cents. So it's brownies and money, different units. It's a rate, but it's a type of ratio as well which means that we can show how graphically these are proportional to each other. Check this out. First, I need a graph. So if we were to graph this relationship, you can see a couple of things. If we had one brownie, it would be 50 cents. So on this graph, number of brownies is one, and I go up, and when I go over, to the left, I'll see that it actually says the price is 50 cents. We know also that if we were to buy 10 brownies, it's $5. We found that calculation in the prior video on rates. It makes sense. It's half the price. Well, if that's the case, if I have six brownies, it would be $3. So look at these points. I have 1, 0.5, 6, 3, and 10, 5. They all show the ratio relationship between the number of brownies and the price. The number of brownies here is the independent variable because the price will depend on how many brownies I actually buy. But the cool thing about this is that if I actually connect all these points together, it's forming this nice line that will help me determine other relationships between the number of brownies and the price. For example, let's say I wanted to figure out how much I can get for $4. How many brownies can I get for $4? Well, using my graph, I could go across and see, oh, well, hits the $4 at the line right about there, if I go straight down, I can get eight brownies for the $4. Maybe I wanna figure out how much money it would be if I bought five brownies. So if I bought five brownies, according to this graph, it would cost me $2.50. So the graph really helps me figure out mathematical problems just using the ratio relationship, the proportional relationship between these values. So this graph is actually directly proportional, meaning that the values are very proportional to each other. And I know this because they actually go through the origin, zero, zero. So each value in this line has the same type of relationship. It's in proportion to each other. This must also have some sort of linear relationship. And I know this because huh, there's a line. And that's what linear means. It means that they lie on the same line, the same straight line. And these points lie on the same straight line. If there is a, a linear relationship, that means there must be a pattern, a pattern of values that I can follow to look at this relationship. So if you notice, there is a pattern. Going from each dot, each level of this line, I go up one and over to the right two. Up one and over to the right two. If I follow this pattern, I will actually hit every point on this line. This pattern is the slope of this line. It's the rise over the run. And in our case, the rise over the run is one over two. Every linear relationship has a slope, has a value like this. 
It might not be the exact same numbers, but it has a rise over run type of value. This value is also great to show how the price is half of the amount of brownies. Think about it. If I had six brownies, the price was three. If I had 10 brownies, the price was five. The slope is showing that relationship that it's half the price of brownies. And once again, it's going through the origin of zero, zero. So I could use this to form an equation that would signify the line, the actual linear relationship. So my X is my independent variable, that's the number of brownies, and my price is Y. Okay, so if my price is half of the number of brownies, that is shown by the equation Y equals one half X, because I had to take the number of brownies, which is my X, multiply it by a half to get the new price of Y. Linear relationships, it's really cool. But what if something happened? What if instead of just the price being half the amount of brownies, what if I got a deal? What if I have a deal where the amount of brownies actually had a, I had a coupon and I found the amount of brownies was a dollar off. And with this coupon, I could apply it to our scenario. Well, how would that change my graph knowing that I have a coupon for a dollar off? Hmm, if you notice, the graph shifts. It's gotta shift down to deal with that, that, that discount. But in shifting, I'm still keeping the same value. I just have to make sure that I bring the price down one. So if you notice in that ordered pair, Instead of starting at zero, zero, I'm now gonna start at zero, negative one. And that's gonna denote that price of minus one because I'm getting a dollar off. The price is my Y, so it's in the Y section of my order pair. So the point I'm really starting this graph at is zero, negative one. And that's going to be how I follow my pattern. My pattern is still up one over two because the value is still half. The price is still half the amount of brownies. That hasn't changed. The only thing that has changed is that now I'm getting a dollar off of the total price. How does that change my equation? Well, I know that my slope is gonna stay the same, but instead of the slope just be, or the equation just being y equals one half x, I have to account for that dollar off coupon. So it's y equals one half x minus one. So isn't that so cool? Not only are you able to show proportional relationships through graphs, you can also show how proportional relationships are also linear and they have a linear relationship to them as well. Hope you like this video. See you next time.